God's done something good for you, you need to tell somebody. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony is extremely important. Yes, ma'am, Dana. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. It gives Jay something to do. I'm so low. Um, so, Saturday, first half of the day wasn't wonderful. But on our way home, we stopped uh, to eat at the Cracker Barrel uh, around Conroe, mm -hmm. just me and the kids. And I kind of made eye contact with a couple over there and went on about our business, got our food, and the waitress came up to me and said, this young couple over here that just left, they wanted to pay for your meal. They um, had wanted to pay for an older couple, but someone had already paid for their meal. And so... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's They're great. <laughs> dominoing. Yeah. And so um, they told her that she, they wanted to pay for ours and that they try to pay it forward any time they're there. And they gave her a $20 tip. And, like, we were totally amazed. Like, wow, that's awesome. So then there was a gentleman sitting at their table by himself, older man. And so the kids are like, well, let's buy his dinner. I'm like, okay. So we did. It was super sweet. The people next to us, two guys, when they were leaving, they're like, did y'all save room for dessert? We're like, no, we never do. He put $20 down on the table and said, y'all buy dessert. It was so amazing. So we left that 20 and left a note for the waitress that God is good. And we're totally blessed and had just a nice end to the day. Amen. So it was a major blessing. And Thank you for so testifying. Yeah. Good, Dana. I, I was thinking today, it just, I, it just overwhelmed me. What a wonderful life we've got. And what a wonderful nation we live in in the state we're in you know and i know there's a lot of negatives and things but man i'm just it just kind of came over me because i know there's so much negativity what went on in paris and and this whole thing with isis and i'm so glad the russians got involved because they don't have rules <laughs> you know they'll just go over there and bomb the snot out of them they don't care you notice that you know so i'm so glad they they ticked off the russians you know because yeah they just it just made my life better uh, to see that uh, I was, I got a call today from a lady. I went to the hospital to pray over someone. And, of course, uh, as my custom is, I leave a bandana, you know. I'll tell you who it was. It was uh, Virgie Shepherd. Harold Shepherd's mother is 93 years old, and she's passing. You know, she's, her body's just wore out. Her suit is just about it. But that woman, my goodness, you walk in, she quotes the Bible. She is so bold in her testimony. Her mind is, 93, her mind is so sharp. As soon as I walked in, she knew who I was. She's outlived all of her pastors, <laughs> all of them. You know, I mean, she's the last one standing in any Assembly of God church. She's been in this building <laughs> before it died out, before we picked it up, you know. Uh, so she's, she's an amazing lady. But we started to pray, and, boy, she goes into speaking in tongues real loud, and the nurses are shutting doors, and, you know, and I'm just loving this moment. It's just, it was a lot of fun being with her. I leave, I leave her band down, and, and I walk away. Well, Sister Wanda calls me today, and she said, Pastor, she said, um, a nurse walked in, and she looked at Virgie, and she said, I know who your pastor is. She says, Pastor Jerry, the little country church. And she said, how do you know that? She said, because you got that bandana wrapped around your neck. <laughs> so it was pretty cool that even the nurses are starting to know who we are from the hospitals we go to and how we pray for folk. And, uh, uh, and I've, given, I've given a lot of bandanas to people to go pray for people. This is not just a Pastor Jerry thing. You know, this is an Acts chapter 19 thing. You just go do it. Just go pray over people. Amen. Got your Bibles, Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Tonight, I want to teach to you a little thought here. We, we're moving into what is the holiday season. And, uh, and holiday comes from the word holy day. It's, it's, so don't forget that. You know, some people say they, you're not going to get Jesus out of any of this. Holiday is holy day. Xmas, the letter X, Google it. It's, uh, it's the uh, Greek letter for Christ. So anybody who tries to X Jesus out of Christmas is adding him to it. So you need to go into those stores and put Xmas and say, thank you for adding Jesus to our, you know, uh, and they'll look at you like dumbfounded because they think they're keeping him out, and actually they added him in. Okay. So I, I don't want you ignorant to any of this stuff. I'm going to teach you a lot of things over the next few weeks. And, and uh, you know, the, the worst thing, I, as a matter of fact, I'm here to damage your ignorance with tremendous revelation. <laughs> Amen. How many could use their, their, their ignorance damage? Amen. That, I think it's so important because we, we can be so ignorant for so long. You know, uh, unlearned means you don't know. Ignorant means you don't know you don't know. And there's a lot of people who don't know they don't know, you know. And so they act like they know, and they don't know. So 
We try to teach them the best we can. And I'm, I'm one of those, too. I'm learning all the time. So my, my thought tonight, though, it's a little bit of a long uh, uh, title. It's where I've been that makes me thankful for where I'm going. It's where I've been that makes me thankful for where I'm going. You know, it's what you've gone through in life that makes you thankful for where you're at and where you're heading. And sometimes you have to reflect back. You have to look back at it. And I, I, I think uh, as believers, our memory gets too short. Oftentimes, we only remember the last thing somebody done for us. This is one of my gripes in life, by the way. Uh, as a pastor, I, I have preached somewhere around 6,000 sermons. And sometimes somebody can only remember the last one I preached, and they're mad at me, and they leave. But they had 5,999 good meals. And they got one sour crowd, and now they're mad. Amen. You hear me? Sometimes we forget. Well, our memories get a little, little messed up, and we got to go back and remember all the good things that God's done for us, too, because we'll have an incident in life, and we'll forget what God has done and all the good things that God has done in our life. So Isaiah 51, 1 says, Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. This is Isaiah speaking to the people of God and reminding them to look back where you came from. See where it happened. You've got to remember where you came from. Uh, I've often said uh, if you, a man with no future always reverts back to his past. So your future is important also. So as you're moving through life, and never has that statement been more true to me than right now. I have dear friends who were in ministry that are, that are forgetting where they came from, and they're reverting back to their past. And it, 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 everything inside me, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a conflict with fixing to happen. I'm an offense fixing to move. I, I, I will not just sit back and let people do that. I've got to remind them, guys, you don't want to go back to a past that was corrupt. Amen. You want to keep moving forward in your life. So it's very important to remember. But there's a reflection back on the good things in life. And that's what he says to him. Look back from the rock which you came out of. you got to remember where I brought you from, he's saying. you got to have a memory. We, we tend to allow our memory to, be, to go bad when things start to go wrong. We, we forget this. You know, all of you, I'm sure everybody in here just about except Brother Stewart, has a computer. And, uh, you, and, and on your computer, it'll say your system is low on virtue. And I'm sorry, Brother Havard, I'll throw you in there too. Uh, <laughs> your system is low on virtual memory. Some applications may be denied. It's important to keep an, enough memory. When it, my last computer I bought, I bought an inexpensive computer, and then I had lots of memory put on it. Because really all I need in a computer is lots of memory. Because I have a lots of messages. I have things that I put into that. That's my main purpose in my computer. I'm, I'm not somebody that's, uh, that's putting pictures and things like that. I just need sermons. So I have uh, external drives. And, and these are important for me to, to hang on to. Many of us desire to go forward, but we want more. But we are ungrateful for what we have. And this is the season where, we're, where we have to start getting thankful again. It, you know, it's entirely different. In Isaiah, he says, look at where and how God brought you out. Look unto the rock. And we understand the rock was Christ. And even in the Old Testament, the Scripture tells us in the New Testament that the rock that Moses struck and Moses spoke to that brought out water was Christ himself. Amen. So he, he was there then. I've often said that Jesus is, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The, Jesus is eternal Word. He's, a, he's the Word wrapped in flesh. He's always been. There's never been a time Jesus wasn't. Some people think Jesus only showed up 2,000 years ago. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's always been. Amen. You can call him Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I don't want to get into the Godhead here, but I'm just telling you, and, and I can't because I don't know enough. That is one place where I, I, I almost want to stay ignorant because I've seen churches split over the Godhead. I've seen, I've seen people get mad over, is, are you a Trinitarian? Are you oneness? Are you twoness? You know, I don't understand the head of God. I do understand the heart of God, and the heart of God is one of love. Amen, one that cares. I, I can argue either way and have with people and just, just for fun of it because there's no way to put God in a box because he's God. Amen. He's just, he's just that way. So he says, look, the word look there means to scan in regard to favor. I'm looking for a blessing in, in, in favor. You've got to reflect on that. You've got to go back on it. I found an old sermon today from 1998. As a matter of fact, I would preached this sermon at my friend Pastor Rick Hawkins' church, and his secretary took the sermon, and she, she made it into a manuscript. Took the whole sermon and made it into a manuscript. And I read that whole manuscript today. And I'm going through this thing, and I'm, I marveled how good I was that long ago. 
man, I mean, it was just really, and I'm thinking, and she even told me, she said, Pastor, you need to write a book. Uh, uh, last Wednesday, when I uh, got done teaching out at the North Campus, a lady came up to me. She's from Indiana. She said, well, why don't you write a book? I said, I don't know what you say. She said, duh. <laughs> just say, but I don't know how to put it into words. I know how to preach, but I don't know how to make a, a, a message. Uh, but I went back, and here it was in the ni- 1998, and I'm reflecting on God had just given us 12 acres. In Crosby, you know where the Crosby Church sits. I mentioned two of my covenant friends, uh, Rick Hawkins and Kenan Smith. And I'm going through here. And I'm talking about uh, Kenan asked me to come. He wanted to come preach for me. And I said, come on, just don't break anything because you're a lot cheaper if you do that. Because he's on the power team at the time. And I used, and I'm walking through this sermon. I'm reading it and I'm going, and, and the reflection just came up. Maybe that's why I felt so good today, Dana, because I'm going through this thing and I'm realizing, you know, I'm still the same man I was. This was 1998. That, that I preached this, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm laying some things out, and, and the reflection on it was so good. It was so much fun to go back and realize, and you know what, guys? I'm still preaching the same stuff now as I preached then. Yeah, I, I haven't changed. I just do the same thing. <laughs> no, there was one part in there I forgot all about. This is why reflection is so good. If I ask you this question, most of you would raise your hand. If I ask you, how many want to be used of God? Most of you would raise your hand, wouldn't you? Yeah. But I don't want to be used of God. God used Pilate. God used Judas. God used Herod. God used Pharaoh. If you're married, do you want your spouse to use you or want you? I want God to want me. I want to be wanted. I want God to say, and, and when I'm reading Scripture, that's what I see. I see a Jesus who loves us so much he wants us. That he died for us. There, there's that there want there. And it, that, those two, that little bit of thinking right there, that little bit of reflection just shifted my, it was a paradigm shift today. I, I don't want to be used of God. I want God to want me. I don't want you to use me. I want you to want me. I want to want you. Amen. That, that my friend, gives value to someone. Oh, man, that's just good stuff right there. Amen. So, so look, it's a twofold scan. It's not just where he brought you from, but how he did it. And how he did it from the rock from which you were hewn, which means to cut or to carve out of whence you are, or you are dug. He, he dug us out. How many know God dug us out of a lot of holes in life? And not only that, the rock, this issue of the rock is still important because, again, we're not bricks. God, we're rocks. We're jagged. We're, we're, we're not uniformed. Everybody here is different. You, you have different qualities. You have different personalities. You have, uh, 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 there's things, gifts in your life. All of that is different. So again, not uniformity, but God uses rocks. So he, he dug us out. He looked at the quarry of rock, and he picked you to dig you out of a mess. He didn't, there were certain people, and you know it, they're still in the mess. They're still in the quarry. But God chose you. He pulled you out of something, and he began to work on you and began to change you. That's where he found us. He said, Look to the hole of which you were uh, in the pit. When David said about his little daughter that I'm going to raise my daughter in the church, I thought that was a great thing. I wasn't raised in church. I was dug out of a pit. God took me. That's the best testimony in the world right there that you stayed with it all the way through. But on the flip side, some of us were in the pit. We were in a place that needed to be rescued. We needed God to pull us out. So there's a reminder. Look back to the pit from which you came. That's why your testimony is important. You've got to remember, some of you, by God to help you, you have not shared the depth of your, your testimony with other people. It's very important to do. When we did Brother Ron's uh, uh, memorial, Sister Dolly, and again, I commend you in the grace of God on your life for being here tonight as you were Sunday and church that takes a special woman to pull off what you're doing uh but we miss your husband dearly and i know you do but it, when i i listen to people talk about him there were testimonies of his life things that happened uh your own son bobby talks about a time when they were in a pit and they were in mount bellevue and a tornado came over and the sirens were hitting and he said that uh, they took off running bobby was just a young in his 20s he said that ron grabbed him and took his safety belt and threw it around an eye beam and hooked him up and said face the eye beam and he took off running to make sure he spared your son I listen to these testimonies, and I think to myself, you know, th- there's some of you that got tested. You have not shared them yet. You got to remember. You got to look back. Amen. You got to see things. Uh, I-, I see it all through the Word. It- it's a place punctured. It was where I found you. It was a dungeon I, I examined. I-, I pulled you from. David had a cry in Psalm 143 about the pit. He said, "Oh Lord, hear my cry." 
my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. Again, look what's he doing. He's got a memory. He's going back. He's meditating. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Selah is a word that means to set, to think about it, to mull it over. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me or I will be like those who go down to the pit. David was telling God, he was reflecting back on where he came from. You talk about a guy that could reflect. I mean, surely he had this, 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 uh, this, these colored images in his mind of taking Goliath out. And before Goliath, there was a lion and there was a bear. Uh, David had memories he could pull from. If there was anybody, I'm a campfire setter. I love to sit around a campfire. I love to tell stories. I love to hear stories. Well, before Brother Haley passed away, me and Don and, and, and Mr. Haley would be down at the campsite. And he would just tell stories. And every now and then, he would repeat himself. As I've learned after I've hit 50 that I do. Amen. And I've learned also to just shut up and let him do it. Amen. Let him let him tell the story again. And it's just and there's something about sitting by a fire with David and listening to him talk about how did you kill the lion? How did you take out the bear? What did you run toward them? Did or, or did were you fleeing? The Bible says he did it to rescue the sheep. That literally in one place he took a sheep out of the bear's mouth. Amen. That that's aggression. That's something else. That, that, there's nobody else to, to help you. But he knew God did it. And then there's the issue with Goliath. And there's all the battles that David fought. So he reflected on that. Here's the principle. You've got to learn to use past victories to accomplish future defeats. Amen. If you're going to deal with the defeats in your life, what's ahead for you? The victories you're going to have, you've got to look back at your past victories. You've got to remember where God has brought you from. Uh, you know, you've got to remind yourself of the pit where God found you. Psalm 88 verse 2 says, May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of trouble, and my life draws near the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like a man without strength. Here's signs that you're in the pit. It's a place of silence. And it, 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 I know it looks somewhat like depression, but this is almost like uh, giving up. It's a time of darkness in one's life. It, it's the day of destruction. Something has happened to cause a shaking. It's an hour of dryness. It, it's just your life is, uh, you know what dry feels like. Like you worship and nothing's happening. And you're going through the motions. Amen. But you don't feel that, that, that uh, surge of energy back in your life. You were deaf to the voice of God. God was trying to say something even in the storms of your life. You couldn't see God in anything. It was as if he was absent and he had forsaken you. When everything seemed to be falling apart for no apparent reason. When dryness characterized the condition of your soul. This is, this is the place. This is the pit, my friend. And when you hit this place, you need to cry out. And also, you need to remember where God took you and brought you from. Amen. So, uh, where there comes a time when God says, you better remember where I brought you from. Look back at the, what I've done for you. Isaiah 51, 2. Look to Abraham, again, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one. And I blessed him, and I made him many. When he called Abraham, Abraham was by himself. We know that Abraham was an astrologer. He was really a heathen. He wasn't anybody near born again. In the Old Testament, they had faith in God. Amen, what God is going to do. They, matter of fact, guys, the Old Testament, they were known as believers. Okay, just like we are in the New Testament. We're still believers. There are three things that to be reminded of. First was the call. He called him by name. To address by name is to remind you of your purpose. I've often said it's important what you name something. I've had animals given to me. I've renamed them. I think it's important what you name them. That name carries something with it. It's important what you name your children. Amen. Because you're giving a legacy to them. So he called him. First, he pulled him out. Second was the blessing, which means to kneel and act in adoration. There's something about the blessing. When it says here, I called him, he was but one, and I blessed him. Old Testament blessings often came with the laying on of a hand. It was a putting on a hand. It was the, it was the patriarch, the father, who blessed the children and put his hand. We've talked about Isaac doing that. It was important to stretch out the hand. He was blessed. And then the increase, to give you abundantly more than you deserve. So God calls us. 
When you got born again, God called you. He knows your name. When you get to heaven, that's what you want to hear. The blessing that he's given in your life, amen, he's adorned you. He's, he's put uh, uh, children in your life, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, amen. And then he increases you to give you abundantly more than what you deserve. How many believe that you've got more now than what you deserve? I do, man. I do. I look back and I say, God, you, you've done something else in my life. So he calls us, he blesses us, and he increases us. Well, you say, Pastor, he ain't done that for me. Stay with him long enough. Just stay with him and watch what he does. Now, the result of reflection is this. When you look back, the Lord will surely comfort Zion, which is the church, and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wasteland like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving, and the sound of singing. Yeah, they, I love to sing. I don't have a voice for it. But man, I love to sing. There's nothing like a good song. I, 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 can't drive, I can't ride in my car without music. Amen. I love music. There's something about music. And he says that, that the singing was found in the church. Singing. There's something about the song in the house. There's something about when, when there are times I'm up here on the front row and I, I listen and I can hear you guys in the background. That's the way church is supposed to be. Amen. You, you ought to overwhelm these guys up here on the platform. Amen. Just, just get loud and sing and enjoy. That, that joy and gladness. Well, where does the song come from? From joy and gladness. It's hard to sing when you're sad. It's tough. I mean, unless you want to sing country. <laughs> he goes on. The Lord says, I will restore you to the place that you left. Your destiny will be inhabited again. When I think of Thanksgiving, I think of Luke chapter 17. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they had to stand far off. They couldn't get close to you. By law, they had to let you know that they were diseased, and they, they were fearful to, to get near you. And they lifted up their voices, so that they're, they're yelling here. And they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. What is turning back? Looking back. Reflecting back. Remembering what just happened. And with a loud voice glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the other nine? There are not found that were returned to give glory to God except you. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, have faith. Uh, your faith has made you whole. A thankful heart reflects on God's goodness to others. When we turn back, we glorify God. There's, this, man, there's so much in this message. You got ten guys. Probably they're, they're friends. Why, I say they're friends. I'm going to tell you why. I call it a, a, a fellowship of pain. If I'm a leper and you're a leper, we're friends. Women that are pregnant are friends. Um, those of you that have walked through disease in your life, you find out somebody else that has it, and you connect with them. We have a fellowship of pain. You'll see that, that kids are divorced. will hang out with kids are divorced because they understand the same rejection and pain. There, there's just something about pain in our lives. So you have ten people that have this, this fellowship of pain, and they're running together. But here comes a dividing line, and it had to do with who would give God glory and who wouldn't. And so ten yell, have mercy on us, Lord. They called him master. And Jesus, in this scene, he didn't touch them. He sent them away to the priest, which is Old Testament, because the priest would always declare them clean. He would be the one that would say that, that everything's all right. As they went, they were healed. Just like the cold front coming down and changing. As they were going, it was like they were moving into a front of healing. And their ears came back, and their nose came back, and their toes came back. You know, that's what happened. The outer appendages were gone. There's an embarrassment to leprosy. You can't lift your hands in church. You, you can't even go to church. You're outside of it. Leprosy is actually, in the Old Testament, was a type of sin. It was like, the, it would, it, that's what it taught us, that when you get sin in your life, it's like leprosy. It, it turns white as snow. It, it becomes something that spreads. It's something that you just can't take care of. You can't keep it hid. It just keeps on moving throughout the body, and it moved through them. And so here they are. They have the chance to be not only healed but forgiven. And they walk away. And as they're going, things start happening in their life. But one guy, he reflected. He looked back at, toward Jesus, and he began to yell, and, and he glorified God. And when he did, that it did something to Jesus. And, and, and it tells me that Thanksgiving matters. It matters for you to give thanks. It matters for you to be appreciative. It matters for you to be grateful in life. It's, if it didn't, Jesus wouldn't mention the other nine. 
He would have just left it out. But here this man comes back with a loud voice. He glorified God. Hey, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. His ears. He can wear a hat now. He won't fall down over his eyes. I mean, everything is good. He can put glasses back on. He won't fall off where his nose was. Everything came back. When I believe they got healed, they got healed, my friend. Everything began to come back. It, all the white was gone, and the skin had come back on them. And Jesus answered and said, well, I thought there were 10 of you guys. And were they not? Why didn't they turn and give God praise except you? And then he said, rise, go thy way. Your faith made you whole. I can't prove this. You can't disprove it. But I believe there's times that you can lose your healing. I believe there are times with our ungratefulness that we forget where God brought us from. And we lose out on what we had. And so here they go. Did, did they stay well? I don't know, but I'm going to tell you something. This guy right here was appreciative of what he got. Amen. Amen. He remembered. It would do us all good to take a little reflective time. Amen. And look back on life and say, you know what? God did this for me. I can't hardly look at any of you and not be appreciative of something God has done in your life because I've seen him do things in your life. I've watched him work in your life. Amen. So it's, it's important. Giving thanks is not just a suggestion. It, it's not optional. It's not, they're not optional issues in the Bible. Check uh, A or B. This is A. You check it. Uh, Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks to, in all circumstances, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus. What's the will of God? To give God praise in all circumstances. Ephesians 5.20, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks starts with a decision. It ends with an action. Uh, thy faith has made you whole. There's something about worship. Worship is an outward expression of an inward love. When you love God inside here, you're going to express yourself. You're going to show it. You're, your hands are going to lift. Your foot's going to pat. Your mouth's going to to open somehow you're going to say something you can't love somebody and not express yourself amen you sure can't love god who's done so much for you without expressing yourself so what were the other nine uh, ungrateful lepers thinking you ever think about this what were they thinking just what were they thinking well i, I don't want to smooth with jesus or i'll thank him later i'll go to church later i'll give god praise later or, yeah, I was probably going to get better anyway. You know, I was on my way to healing. I had a new doctor I was going to check out. I would probably get well anyway. Or it was just a coincidence that when he said go, we got well. I love that one. I, I think I will wait till I know for sure if this is really working. Or he should have done it a long time ago. God should have dealt with me a long time. He should have helped me then. Uh, why didn't he heal my bad leg while he was at it? <laughs> huh? Come on. You ever got healed in one area and then you thought the other area? Well, doggone. Still wearing glasses? <laughs> Why didn't he get me there? You know? He's probably after my money. That's the only reason he healed me. <laughs> Come on. Many times in life, I've had to say, God, I do not know how nor why, but I trust you. And I'm going to thank you in everything. Tonight, I, I brought my 16-year-old son's car here. He got his license today. I give God thanks <laughs> and praise. But I'm nervous. Oh, am I nervous. I wasn't nervous with the other four. This one makes me nervous. Amen. This one here makes me nervous. Oh, yes. Because I understand sowing and reaping. <laughs> and I've repaired my daughter's truck and my son's truck. And oh well. <laughs> what really matters is what happens in us, not to us. What really matters is what happens in us, not to us. When things happen to you, how does it affect what's in you? Reflection can bring comfort. It reminds us of God's compassion, the return of joy and gladness, which causes us to live in thanksgiving. We're coming up on a, this time next week, many of you are going to be preparing little tidbits of meals together. You know, we'll have church here next Tuesday, and then by Wednesday, you'll be preparing meals. I've already seen people saying that people are coming over, amen, and a turkey will be there. And, and, and if, we, if we're not careful, we forget the whole issue of thanksgiving. Amen. To give God thanks for his goodness in our life. Amen. Psalm 103. I'm going to just flip back there. If you've got your Bibles, you can flip back there with me. 
Psalm the hundred and third chapter. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You got your job, you got your hourly wage, but then the boss comes and says, Hey, I forgot to tell you, this comes with benefits. Amen. You're going to get an extra paycheck every year you work here. You're going to get medical. You're going to get free meals. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. And then you start adding up in benefits, and you realize, boy, this is good. Amen. Amen. Same way with serving God. You got salvation, but you got benefits. You got to look at it. Who forgives all your sins? Benefit. Heals all your diseases? Benefit. Redeems your life from the pit? Amen. From which you were hewn, which you came out of, benefit. Crowns you with love and compassion, benefit. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, benefit. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all, all the oppressed, benefit. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abound in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Benefit, for as high as the heaven are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. Benefit, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Benefit, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Benefit, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers we're just dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over and is gone, and his, pla and his place remembers him no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his children were their children's children. See, I'm going to say it again. His love is with us. I don't understand the head of God. I understand his heart. He loves us. And he knows we're but dust, and he knows that we're weak, and he knows that we struggle. So quit beating yourself up all the time. Learn to ask God for forgiveness. Get back up and get back going. And remember his benefits toward you. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to close this service. I want to hear you testify about your benefits. Okay, get your mic, Joe. I'm done. I preached it. Now, you apply it. What are you thankful for? You can just say, you don't even have to take the mic. You can just say it where you at. What are you thinking? I'm thankful for my salvation and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What's he done for you, Liz? He gave me love and healed my physical health and my heart and my body. And he gave me purpose and dream and God. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, what a heritage you got with your mom and dad. Amen. What a legacy. Somebody else. Go ahead. Just say it. Amen. 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 Scholar, right? Okay, scholar. You should remember that, Ken. All right. Someone else? Thank you. Thank you. I knew that was in you. I've been waiting on that. 
What are you thankful for? It's our family, isn't it? Try to tell people, church about family. One hurts, we all hurt. One rejoice, we all rejoice. Amen. And there are people here peripheral, you know, but I see you getting closer. I see people getting drawn in. We always start peripheral. That's where we start, and then we get, we get drawn in. I sure enjoyed the, the Crosby football game uh, the other night, and I sat with my family, my church family. And Sue was sitting by me, Sue Ray, and she'd say, Pastor, that lady right there is coming to our church, and that lady over there is coming to our church. And she just started pointing out people that I didn't know was coming here. They sitting, you know, toward the back. She said, no back's coming to our church. And they've been our church. I said, wow, our family getting bigger. Amen. Amen. Someone else? What are you thankful for tonight? thankful for Dennis's health. It was just a couple of years ago that we thought we were going to lose you. Someone else? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Grandma. Your family is growing. Yeah. It is the cycle of life. Someone else? Junior? Yes, sir. Thankful for my motorcycle. I get to ride and fellowship. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know some of you don't want to share, but I know you're thinking right now, and you're telling him, and you're thanking God for things in your life. You know, God, God can take a mess and make it your message, you know, and a test and make it your testimony. He's, uh, he's good at that. And, uh, I have a tremendous confidence. In yes, sir.
Amen. Amen. Somebody else just got a few more minutes. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Right. It, Rylan is Andrew in the Bible. Peter, Andrew went and got Peter and brought him to Jesus. Everywhere you see Andrew in the Bible, he's going to get somebody and bring him to Jesus. He doesn't get all the credit, but he's the one always doing it. Yeah, 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 the oldest, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, sir. He's brought a lot of them in here. And Jody comes to church here on, Wednesday, on Tuesday night, and then Jody brought her family here Sunday. So I'm looking around, I'm saying, did this thing... It's get, yeah, it's getting good. Good and good, or like my granny snuff. <laughs> Someone else? What's her name? Macy. Macy. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This Saturday, if you come to the skeet shirt, if you got a, a little country church shirt, wear it, you know, if you can, kind of identify us among the group. Um, and we'll make memories there, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Anyone else before we close out? A quick, yes, ma'am? Miss Linda? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Well, everything covered everything. <laughs> I know you want to get specific, but you'll get all tearful on us. Got a home full of memories. He was a good looking fella back in the day. He wasn't so bad as he got older, but he was good then. Let's stand, guys. There's a lot to be thankful for. I just want to I just want to charge you. I want to <coughs> prod you, you know, guys. Be thankful. Uh, nine guys came back. And there at that moment, <laughs> oh, stove up. The phrase for sore or stiff has nothing to do with a stove top. Stove is actually past tense of stays. It stays in the wooden boat. It's, it smashed a hole in the side. That does to be stove up is to be incapacitated or damaged. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah, thankful for the Internet. You know, I appreciate HolyWild.tv. My mom watches this. This is how she gets her gospel. My dad's bed fast. So I'm thankful for those who run that and who were able to make that work. And There are people around the United States and the world that are watching it, and uh, they pick up on it. So we may look like a little group here tonight, but there are hundreds out there that observe this, and they, they pick up on it, and they watch it during the week. They re-watch, re-listen, you know. So for me, that's, that's a... I'm honored to see that happen. And, um, you know, even like Facebook, I put pictures on there. Somebody said, why do you do that? I do it for my mom. My mom's uh, not a real 
high tech, but she does have Facebook, and so she looks on that to see her kids and her grandkids and see where what what's going on. So when I call the house, she already knows, you know what what. And I sometimes I forget that I put that on there. She already knew what had happened. So it's so important. Father, we're thankful tonight for your love, for your concern, your care. You dug us out of the rock. You pulled us out of the pit. You gave us a song, and you put joy in our hearts. You gave us children, Lord, that we may learn and laugh. And in that sense, we understand more about you. Lord, as parents and grandparents, as uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters, we're connected to a family here by your blood. Some of us, again, on the peripheral, but we're getting closer. We're moving in. We thank you for this house and for settling us. Lord, I pray that you go with us. You protect us as we're outside this wall, outside these walls. Lord, I know the evil that lies outside of here. So I say with great confidence, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, church. Amen.